So I just wanted to make a quick video looking at the actual waveform differences for the Boss SD1 and a couple of tube screamers. I don't have a regular tube screamer, unfortunately, but the new tube one is pretty much the same, I believe, not too different. And then this is a BYOC Overdrive 2, which is based on a TS-808, so it's set fairly stock. This left-hand side is just a clean boost, so we're not going to really play with that too much just the tube screamer side. So we've got volume here, drive and tone. I'll try to remember that so I change the settings properly. I've had a look already and you know there are some pretty key differences in the way the wave shape changes. And then we'll take a look, a little look at the frequency response as well. Super nerdy stuff. I mean, they're both great overdrive pedals in practice and I can't tell that much of a difference listening to them. But I think in general tube screamers, people say they sound a bit smoother, whereas SD1, you know, it has a bit of a sharper edge perhaps and people prefer it with Marshall amps. So we'll, we'll see if there's any kind of reflection in the oscilloscope of that. So we've got a sine wave just coming out of my PC, basically going into the switcher where we have side A engaged, that's the tube screamers, they're both bypass. So as you can see, there's no change or there's a little actually tiny change in the amplitude there just with the bypass tone of the tube screamers so i don't know if that's to do with the interaction of the buffer and the uh, impedances and stuff of the signal anyway engaging the sd1 minimum drive let's just go sort of standard ish settings and we'll do the same with the tube screamer although the tone gets a bit crazy on that okay So as you can see already, a tube screamer has a lot more output. So the main difference I think is that as you turn up the drive on the SD1, the wave shape doesn't really change much at all. It gets a little bit sharper. Whereas if we do that same thing on the tube screamer, bring the level up, so there's the tone knob, makes it really clip hard. And the drive knob, again, not that much change, but you can see how it just kind of it is more symmetrical. SD1 kind of has that sharp edge, doesn't sort of square wave in the same way. And then you can see how much level the tone control cuts and adds with that. Tube Screamer does add quite a bit of level as well, but the way that it clips is different. And then the other one we'll just check Sorry, disengage that. So yeah, another different shape from the um, new tube. And then you can see how the tone control takes it from that kind of, you know, wavy triangle to a real nice smooth square. That's gonna sound a lot different to that. There's no way around that. And other thing to look at is the, um, if we if we engage the clean bend the clean blend on the uh, new tube screamer, look how much level we get out of that. So it's gone just off the screen there, but that's something kind of interesting to keep in mind. And then we'll just have a quick look at the custom mode on the SD1W. So let's go regular settings there. If we engage that, we get you know more output. It's not a huge change really, just more output and more bass I found in, in listening to it. So yeah, there you go, different wave shapes and then we'll have a look at the frequency response as well. And I can't even really get that shape out of the tube screamer, I don't think. No, not really. It's got a couple of different clipping modes. But... So we'll just change the sig gen over to um, pink noise, perhaps. You always forget if I want pink or white noise. So pink is the visually flatter one. So let's full screen fab filter. And we're going through nothing at the moment. And then, so let's have a look at the SD1. Bit of a mid hump, as you can see. I'll get the mouse out of there so that can adjust. Tube screamer. That's in custom mode. Oh no, it's not. You can see the little bit extra low end on the SD1, I think, there. Tube Screamer. 
then there's all the level. If we go back to our sine wave, just have a bit more of a look at, you know, how the harmonic content kind of jumps up so as we increase the drive. So you can see the height of the odd harmonics there. And it even decreases the even ones, it seems, as you bring the drive up, which is kind of interesting. And there's a tone coming up, brings everything up as you'd expect. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that it decreases those. So you adding right on the tip at the top there, yeah, that makes sense, that extra saturation kind of right up high increases, although we wouldn't really hear that, you know, it's above 20K. Over to the Tube Screamer. So you can see that much stronger uh, second harmonic there in comparison. Well, in relative to the first and third. We're gonna level down. So bringing the drive up. And then, yeah, so that's more what we'd expect. We see everything kind of increasing as the frequency increases, whereas SD1 does that interesting thing of pushing pushing some of them down. That's cool. And we'll just check out the NTS real quick. Mm -hmm. See that tone knob just adds everything there. Um, it's quite an aggressive circuit, that one, especially with the trim pots up. Uh, we'll, we'll do another video on that another time. So anyway, yeah, I just thought I wanted to check that out. It's kind of interesting just how, you know, they're regarded as very similar pedals, um, but they do definitely sound different in person, but not really something you could really tell in a mix, in my opinion. You know, they both both they're both good overdrive circuits and you know they, they do what they need to do but yeah there is a slight difference and um it might be fairly audible to some people